Well before the advent of handheld firearms, inventors sent multiple barrels or chambers on common mounts, but they were limited by the technology of the day. The Billinghurst Rector gun of 1871 had 25 58 caliber barrels fired simultaneously. Plates or clips meant a theoretical seven volleys a minute. The coffee mill gun or Ager had a single barrel with rounds fed through a revolving mechanism from a hopper. The Montigny Mitrailleuse played a larger role in military history at the time. The Mitrailleuse was a Belgian design around 1851 with 37 barrels set circularly and fired by a turning crank handle. Cartridges on a plate were placed onto the breeches. After firing, the plate was removed with its spent cases and a new plate inserted. All the rounds could be discharged in less than a second. Adopted by the French in about 1867, they used a 25 barrel model with the chassis po rifle round. Set like a field gun in the Franco-Prussian War, its 1000 metre range was outdone by Prussian artillery which engaged it from 4000 metres well before any of their advancing infantry. So in that role it was not a success. On the other side of the Atlantic, Dr. Gatling developed a multi-barrel gun in the early 1860s, the forerunner of machine guns today. The Elswick Improved Gatling with Ackley's feed had a cyclic rate up to 750 rounds a minute, a 10-barrel model rated at 1,350 rounds a minute, and this in the 1880s. Gatlings figured in colonial conflicts. The 450 calibre guns were usually manned by Royal Navy crews, although the foil case Martini Henry cartridge was not suitable. It was not until solid drawn cases were introduced that it became practical. Like the Nordenfeldt, its rate of fire was about 350 to 400 shots per minute. Models with more barrels had a higher rate of fire. Introduced in the 1870s and 1880s, the Nordenfeldt and Gardner are classed as volley guns, even though some had only two barrels. A model of the Gardner had only one barrel. Nordenfelts were mostly one inch or 45 calibre with two to five or even ten barrels. The one incher was for anti-torpedo boat. Fire rates of over 1,000 rounds per minute were touted for the 45 10 barrel model. Barrels could fire all together or in sequence. Breech bolts loaded, fired and extracted the rounds via a horizontal crank handle. Cartridges loaded from hoppers on top. It was gravity feed. Late 19th century quick firing guns were classed as machine guns. The 5 barrel 45 inch gardeners, 4, 5 or 10 barrel Nordenfelts, as well as Gatling and Hotchkiss revolving types. Volley guns were more capable of immense volleys with pauses in between, like the Mitrailleuse, whereas a continuous hail of bullets could be fired from the Gatling or the Hotchkiss. Combat between ships offered special opportunities. Those passing on opposite tacks for a moment or two gave a terrific field for the machine gun at close quarters. Naval tactics saw their chief use as an anti-torpedo boat weapon. The spar torpedo gave a very small vessel the ability to deal a fatal blow to a large warship, as occurred in the American Civil War. However, a boat could be destroyed by small arms fire as it came in onto its target. Deployment of men requires space in proportion to their number. If, as in a defile, street or bridge, such extension is not possible, the machine gun with 10 barrels an inch apart replaced 10 rifles occupying a wider front. Questions of weight and transport, important in land armies, are not so critical in vessels in regards to machine guns of the day. It was realised by observers then that improved portability meant as great a military revolution as steam had made earlier to power and machinery. The Gardner was originally a single or double barrel his criteria was not a powerful gun, but rather to establish a minimum of weight and size first, then achieve the highest rate of fire. More powerful guns were difficult to transport, sight and mount, 
and in training of the crews. France's navy adopted the Hotchkiss for the same reason as the British did the Nordenfeldt. Early naval Hotchkiss were shell guns, claiming that the volley of shell splinters was more effective than multi-barrel volleys of the Nordenfeldt. The one-inch Nordenfeldt countered that against a torpedo boat, a single barrel was sufficient, but a volley gave four chances of a hit. The British Navy protected its machine gun crews with shields, but a disadvantage was the limited arc of fire and space. Early installations were naval, set on high mounts or pedestals. Galloping carriages with limbers are seen in turn-of-the-century drawings for land service. British and colonial issue Gatlings were made in England, chambered for the 450 Gatling or Gardner Gatling cartridge and fitted with the 240 round Broadwell drum magazine. Some 65 calibre Gatlings were made by Sir W. G. Armstrong at his Elswick Ordnance Works and it was available in one inch calibre as well, like the Nordenfeldt. Here is a table for comparison. Mm -hmm.